authenticity. And I wanted to look for an actor to speak Cantonese.、Hmm. And guess what? No one speaks that language. It's a dying language. Everyone speaks Mandarin. A lot of submissions came. I'm like, all right, not bad. You know, like get the look, the resume. But I only speak Mandarin.、Mm. I'm like,、oh. and we all know Will and Norm. Like, when the Mandarin people speak Cantonese. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Lucky Boys Podcast. You you made an adaptation of Henry Chang's、uh, novel. Yeah.、Uh, and you turned it into a short. Yeah. And you have a few、uh, very popular actors in it. Yeah, very talented and generous、uh, people. Yeah. yeah, can you elaborate on that? Okay. okay, I mean, we definitely got the legendary Tai Ma in it, who's in Mulan, Farewell, Rush Hour, amongst what I think two hundred credits under his name.、Insane. He's America's his, dad right now. Yeah, yeah, he is. He his is. catalog is. He's、insane. Asian America's dad. <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think he's a really fantastic actor. I just don't look him as the Asian American dad. I think he's really gifted.、Mm-hmm, um, definitely. And then we got、uh, Ronnie Chan from The Daily Show and Crazy Rich Asian. Funny、uh, man, funny man. Yes, yes. And we got Perry Young, who is in The Warrior, The Nick. You know,、um, who else? We got what? Watching Ho from Daredevil, and we got Christopher Randolph, which I don't know if you guys play video games. He was the one of the voice actors for the Metal, Metal Gear series. Oh, cool. He, he、mm. played Otacon.、Um, who else we got?、Um, we got Michael Toe. Uh, Henry Yook from the Warriors. Michael Tosin, Lucky Grandma. I mean, that was kind of your plan, right? To bring together <laughs> all the Asian people you could find. It, it wasn't that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not because of their reputation, who they were. I wanted to show people, like, hey, you know, what if the community came in and with no lines or with lines, whatever, doesn't matter. Like, imagine a show or a movie. Everyone's there that we know and seen, and what is their world like, and what's the character. So it was. Great that they say yes, you know. And then also we got Ken Lin from Notorious MSG.、Um, that was great to have because you know I do admire these people's work, and it wasn't just like oh yeah, just make the movie look better. No, I just wanted to come in because show people, hey, you got fans of Notorious MSG, Lucky Grandma, Warrior. Imagine all the fans to see one showcase, you know. You see what you just did there. A lot of people complain about how. Asian American books, movie stories, don't get adapted properly. Yeah, yeah. And look at what you just did there. You took an Asian American novel、mm-hmm. story, you adapted it、mm-hmm. with people within the community, community, and you kept the story as real as possible. Within our budget, yeah. Within within <laughs> your budget,、um, yeah. however limited, but. I mean that just goes to show like something incredible because a lot of the times, when they want to move forward with that, they would look on outside factors how they can somehow change it and not keep it as authentic in、mm-hmm. order to make it more appealing to a wider audience.、Mm-hmm. And I would argue that it is appealing. To a wider audience, if you keep it real, I think、yeah. people want real stories. They don't want it all Hollywood up. That's where the money comes in. You know, like, hey, if someone's giving you X amount of dollars and it's like, I want this and that, some people be like,、oh, I guess we have to do it. You know, and I, and I get that business side, but luckily this is an independent film and it's a community project, so we had that luxury and freedom to be like, well, can you make Jack White? No, <laughs> go fuck yourself.、Right. You know, so. Obviously not. So we had to, we had one perk about that. But、uh, props to Henry Chang because like I call him the Godfather. Like he just because without his story, without his vision of that world, you know, just showing it how he grew up.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't know that world, you know, through his stories. I don't know if you guys read that. Right. Well, it, yeah, I, re- yeah. I read some of、uh, his book series, and、yeah. it's very immersive. Like the characters.、Um, Like the the thing with that is like he actually they're three dimensional characters. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you have gangs, you have cops and robbers and everything like that.、Mm-hmm. But then they're、mm-hmm. three three dimensional characters that look like you and me, and I I appreciated that and、mm-hmm. I, I and I love the character. The world that he built was amazing. See, he, here's the thing that that Henry shared with me,、uh, and and I think we were one night we were out at a bar drinking together, and we we're just talking over you know over a beer and.、Mm-hmm. And I think Henry had a whiskey, but uh, <laughs> but uh, we were just talking, and and he was like, "I really," and this was before you guys were on his project,、mm-hmm. and he says, "You know, I really want to turn this into something."、Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Well, it sounds like 
a pretty good book. Like, haven't anyone approached you? He goes, like, yes, they did. Mm-hmm. And they were in talks, but it fell through because he wanted he wanted to be able to have a partner where he can trust mm-hmm. to do it correctly and mm-hmm. properly. Where in they where where they wouldn't wash it out with another character that was not accurate to what he wanted to portray within his book series. Mm-hmm. And when he said that to me, I thought it was amazing because I won't say the network's name. I know who, but yeah. You know who, yeah. right? Yeah. But most people would see that label and go, wow, this label or this network is willing to invest in my story but remember that was pre-crazy rich asian yes. a long time ago yes so things were different right even though it was like five years still different mm-hmm. you know i think the last three years things change rapidly man we've seen more representation right and right again you know yeah so but it was pre that but at the same time people will still want hey you you found my book and you want to make it into something mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah of course mm-hmm. but for henry not to sell out Mm-hmm. because he wanted it true to the vision and just be patient with it mm-hmm. uh, i i give henry a lot of credit i mean this guy is he really does talk the talk and walk the walk mm-hmm. you know and uh how i do want to go how did you end up um finding and connecting with all of this talent i mean it's like the first domino effect i i mean i have this uh a mutual friend uh our friend uh you know i don't want to say his name but he introduced me to this uh a woman Joanne, uh, she's an actress, mm-hmm. and then Joanne started introducing me to other people. So really, it was actually uh, our friend Shing Ka. Shing um, was politely to introduce me to people like Celia, Lex, all these people. And then when you know Celia, then that it's just networking. Just, and then it's like a domino effect. Exactly. Then how did you get to the point where you got connected with Perry, Ty, Ronnie? Ty oh. was actually because him and Jeff, Jeff Lee, which you had it in the podcast. Like, was that your first episode or second? No. No, I think it was within the first 10. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Jeff, um, they're BFF, and I didn't know that. And, you know, just to... Henry, too. Henry, too. But Jeff was... People don't know. Jeff was... Uh, I, no. Ty was uh, his best man in his wedding. So they go way back. Oh, oh, they wow. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Jeff, I think Jeff told us that, right? I don't remember that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeff, uh, Jeff told me that. Yeah, and, and, and just to hear that, you know, like uh, the basement workshop and all this wonderful stuff about their basement past shop. history and their acting career. So I met Ty through that, and they wanted to do uh, something for the community, and we did. We, we um, actually host a uh, first acting master class for Ty Ma in Chinatown. Ty wanted to pay back the community. That's one thing I love about Ty. He's always supportive, contributed. He, like, he just wants to give, you know. Because he had a little break while he was um, doing a project here. So he wanted to do a master class, talk to Jeff. It's like, yeah, let's do it. Like, who, who can we help? It's like, I know a guy, Patrick. And he reached out and said, hey, Pat, can we make this happen? I'm like, when? We want to do it next week. I'm like, next week? Whoa. I'm like, all right, let me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me see what I can do. And we had like one or two meetings. Boom. And Ty taught his first master class, I think, uh, three, four years ago. And he had his second one uh, just before the production began. So that's how I met Ty, uh, to Jeff. Uh, who else? Perry, I think I met through, I think Perry, everyone knew who Perry was. He just came around Chinatown and, and about, and he went to Asian Roma, and we were just talking and stuff like that. Very humble guy. Didn't we watch like some series, Wu Assassins? Yeah, but Perry was not in it. Uh, Perry's but he was warrior. there, he was there, I think. Yeah, he was there, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think. That's the first time I, I met them. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean. Or oh, that screening? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think so, but I think I met him before then. You know, like he would just come by at Asian Roma after he wrapped up season one Warriors. Mm. And I was like, hey, what's up, Harry? And, you know, got introduced like that. And uh, who else? Uh, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie actually uh, found because he retweeted the project. And oh, we, wow. yeah, we just That you did? That, yeah, for Father Son. Okay. So while we were doing Kickstarter, uh, almost, oh. uh, almost been a year. Um, during the process, uh, we were looking for Jack Yu. And that was hard, really hard, because we were trying to keep it going back what you said, authenticity. And I wanted to look for an actor to speak Cantonese. Mm. And guess what? No one speaks that language. It's a dying language. Everyone speaks Mandarin. A lot of submissions came. I'm like, all right, not bad. You know, like, get the look, the resume. But I only speak Mandarin. Mm. I'm like, oh. And we all know Will and Norm. Like, 
when the Mandarin people speak Cantonese. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, are you guys all Yo. Canto? You guys are all Well, I'm Toy San, but Toysan, I yeah, yeah. yeah. from I'm, that background. I'm, I'm FJ. So it's tough, man. Yeah. Um I mean but granted like Ronnie's background he's, uh, he's Malaysian um and stuff. So, you know, I had a couple candidates and then you know Ronnie just retweeted it. I'm like, oh shit. He kinda has that look, you know, and I was like, why not? And I you know, was Googling him if he even speaks Cantonese. I know he speaks Mandarin. Mm-hmm. So I had a mutual friend, uh, we had a mutual friend, uh, Shuhei Kinoshita, and I was like, hey, Shuhei, can you just, uh, you know, you see, I, I can reach out and from there we can talk it out. And the rest is history. It was just that from social media. I think it's very inspiring. I, I know a lot of other filmmakers, extremely talented. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they always tell me, oh, we don't have enough money. Mm. They, they, they create barriers of entry for themselves. Now, they do exist. But they are not willing to put in the work to make it, to go over those barriers. Now, when I was watching you putting all this together and I'm listening to you, oh, yeah. right? I mean, from, from your GoFundMe, which was very successful. Oh, uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter. I'm sorry, your Kickstarter, yeah. which was very successful. Yeah, oh. from your Kickstarter, which was very successful to the names and the community mm-hmm. and the people that you got involved and excited. I mean, we we just heard so much buzz about this project. Mm -hmm. And when it all got tied together, I'm like, holy shit, he did it. I was amazed myself too. I'm I'm, I'm surprised on like how it went. Right, because if if you were to tell me, and we're sitting next to each other, Mm -hmm. and before any of this is going on, you're saying, I want to get this guy, this guy, I want to do this, this Mm -hmm. and that, and a third. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at you like, man, that's a a tough mountain to climb. That's a lot, you know? You know, you did it. Uh-huh. it. And that's the difference. I think that's the difference between, I think that's the line between success and and failure a lot of the times is having the the energy, the belief, the intuitiveness to really just push forward mm-hmm. and have the right team, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you do that? I, within yourself how did you have that conversation that dialogue in your head i'm still having that conversation in my head <laughs> <laughs> um no nah, man this, i think it's just learning from what you've done in the past i mean she probably could agree like we've all done some good and bad projects and you learn from it you know and i think i mean it'll be amazing if this was my really first first film but it's not this is like my eighth short film whatever so you know i learned a lot from my first kickstarter which i did was love express which i've raise money to shoot a love story on the seven train you know and that was like uh eight years ago raised like about four grand and i learned learned how like how to maneuver how to raise money from that and i took that knowledge and i just imply it to uh you know last year's kickstarter with a father's son and the rest was just like meeting people talking to them but it wasn't my intention to be like i have this project i'm I'm gonna cash you it's just how this rolls like hey if i saw you like norm i saw you in a film i'm like i like your acting i'm gonna keep that in mind and then when the project comes about norm would you like to yes or no if you say no no harm no foul keep it moving okay keep moving because you know you gotta get a lot of no's and yes so i just keep going and going but the best part was like having people like jason here was just really supportive because uh from the get-go jason was there with me in pre-production and just like how do we go about this and motivate you can't do this by yourself i had him you need a team of course and the support